Hi guys, so today I have with me problem 3.52 and I think this is going to be the last problem in chapter three and then I think I'm going to move on to forces next but I'm not completely sure yet so um, if you have any more questions that you would like me to do in chapter three or any sort of projectile motion questions you can always email me or leave it in the comments and I'll do it but if not I think this might be it. Okay so an important piece of landing equipment must be thrown to a ship, which is moving at 45 centimeters per second before the ship can dock. This equipment is thrown at 15 meters per second at 60 degrees above the horizontal from the top of a tower at the edge of the water, 8.75 meters above the ship's deck. Okay, for this equipment to land at the front of the ship, at what distance D from the dock should the ship be when the equipment is thrown, ignore air resistance? Okay, so we can see that we already have a diagram here. So let's explain this problem a bit because this is a slightly tricky problem. So usually when we have some sort of projectile motion question, all we're really thinking is, you know, it's usually some sort of cliff or maybe no cliff or some ground level, but it, the idea is the same where it's just some sort of projectile, right? Or if it's from ground level, it's just some sort of projectile. And that's that, there's usually just really one thing that's moving. Okay, so this problem is a little bit different because we also have this thing moving as well, right? So there's going to be kind of two things we're looking out for. There's gonna be the X and Y motion of this landing equipment, and then there's going to be the X motion of this boat. So if we're throwing a, uh, a, an important piece of landing equipment, that's going to be, we want it to land, um, we want it to land at the front of the ship, right? So right, oh, sorry, no, the front of the ship would be right over, uh, sorry about that. Okay, the front of the ship would be right over here, right? So that's this distance D. But this distance D is changing because we have this, we have this x motion right of the so if, for example if we had no ship it would just be this distance d but because we have this ship moving here this distance d is actually getting um smaller as time increases right so if the boat is right over here then at some point it's going to be right over here and this distance d is getting smaller so we have to take that into account. Um, but in this problem, what we want it to do is we want it to land at the front of the ship, right? So right over here. So we want to figure out what distance from the dock the ship should be so that when it's thrown, it lands at the front, right? So this problem is really interesting because we're going to throw this and it's going to have some sort of movement and it's going to land at the front of the ship. That means that because the ship is moving this way at, at t, so this is at t is equal to whatever, right? At some time. So this is tf actually, tf is the final time and that's when this lands, but we're not looking for this distance at tf. We're looking for this distance at time zero, right? So at time zero, it's actually going to be, um, so at time zero, when this object is still right over here, this ship is going to be right over here. It's going to be this extra distance because over time, so in a span of tf, it's actually going to move this way, right? And that means at t is equal to zero is going to be at this location, and at t is equal to at, is to zero is going to be at this location. But at tf, right? So when it's done moving, um, when it's done completely moving this projectile, it's going to move, and, and th during that tf, this ship is also going to move, and they're going to be at the same location, um, at the same time, so that this equipment can land at the front of the ship. So that's what the problem is. So now that we have a good idea of 
um, what the problem is asking. And now that we've defined the problem and understood this, now let's actually go ahead and write down all of our knowns and unknowns. And we can do that by writing down all of our knowns for the landing equipment and then all of our knowns for the ship. So let me erase that. Okay, so our landing equipment We have X and we have Y. So for, okay, yeah, uh, I'll get to that in a second. And then we also have our ship. And this ship only has X, right? So it's not moving up and down. It's only moving in this direction. It's not moving up or down. Okay. So now that we've made that clear, let, let's write down our, let, let, sorry. Now that we've made that clear, let's write down our knowns. Okay, so we can do the ship because that's easier, right? So because it's in the X direction and it's moving at some sort of, we're, the only information we're giving we're given is that it's 45 centimeters per second, which we're gonna assume is constant because it doesn't really say otherwise. So it travels some distance, right? Distance the boat travels, right? It travels over some time, right? So that was like the T we we're almost talking about. Um, yeah, that's going to be that TF. Okay. And then this also has a V boat, right? So the speed of the boat, which is 45 centimeters per second or 0 0.45 meters per second. And this distance that the boat travels, we don't know. We also don't know how long it takes. We don't know what TF is, but we'll, we'll, We'll hope that we have better luck when we write down our knowns for landing equipment. Maybe we can use some of the information there to figure out this information um, that we're missing for the ship. Okay, so for X, we know that the V, I, landing equipment, I'm just gonna write L, right? Or I'll just write my L like this, so it's a little bit more clear. I don't like that, let me rewrite that. Okay, so VI, oh my God. Okay, so VIL, it's going to be 15 cos 60, right? Then in the X direction, right, we're not, whenever we have projectile motion, the X direction is not accelerating. So we just have this DL, right? The distance the landing equipment travels, which we don't know, but it's just going to be um, some value, right? And then we, it's going to take some sort of time, right? And we don't know what that time is, but we know that it's that TF, right? So at the final time, that landing equipment will have traveled um, DL distance. Okay, what about Y? So we know that Actually, before I go ahead and write down the Y, remember that we should always, I should have done this earlier on, but we should define a coordinate system for ourselves. So I'm gonna say that this is the positive X direction and this is the positive Y direction. So how, what distance does it travel? So D, Y, L, or the H, right? I'm gonna write H actually, cause it's a little bit better. And I'm gonna write it right over here is equal to minus 8.75. And I'm also gonna go ahead and say that this is gonna be minus 0 0.45 because remember we're moving this way and that's in the minus X direction. And I'm gonna say that this is positive 15 co 60 because it's going this direction. Okay, so now we know that oh, we can write down our acceleration which is always gonna be minus 9.8 meters per second squared on planet earth. And this is going to be meters per second. Okay. And then we know that our VI, we're kind of given that. So that's going to be 15 sine 60, right? Because we want this component. And this was cos, and this is going to be sine. And what else? T, right? We also don't know what T is. So that's what we're gonna figure out. And remember how, or recall how T and X and Y are 
the same T, right? And that's actually what ties these projectile motion problems together because something can only travel as far in the X direction as long as it is in the air. So for a time, if you can notice, this is our only unknown and we have three knowns. So that means that if we have our time here, I'm gonna use a different color. So if we, we figure out what our time is, then we can, we know what our time is right over here. And then we have two knowns and one unknown, right? And then because we're also given our time, another thing we can do is these times are gonna be the same, right? Because we want it such that at this, at the, at the um, once this time runs out, the front of the ship is available so that the landing piece can fall on it, right? That's the whole point of this question. So all these T's are the same. And then if we have this T, right? If we have this T right over here and we have our uh, speed of the boat, then we can figure out what D boat is. And then all we really have to do is we have to add together the absolute values of the distance this landing piece traveled and the distance of how the distance that this ship traveled. And then that should be the distance from the, from the dock that the boat should be at. Okay, so let's do that. When we have three knowns, so back, back to right over here, when we have three knowns and one unknown, we have to use the kinematic equations, right? So when I do that, I'm, this is the, I'm gonna use blue now. So I think we have to use this equation, right? As per usual. And when we plug in our values, we have minus 8.75, is equal to 15 sine 60 t plus a half of minus 9.8 t squared. And then what we're going to do is solve for t, right? So there's a number of ways you can do this. I'm not going to actually go ahead and do this because I've done this in so many problems before, but you can use quadratic equation. You can use an online calculator. You can use um, the calculator, a scientific calculator. So um, knock yourselves out, do whatever you want. I'm just going to tell you what the two answers that I get are. So the T's that I get are 3.2077 and minus 0 0.55669 seconds. So because of because one of these is negative, obviously we can't have a negative time in a physical problem here. So it's going to be, this is going to be the time that it takes for, um, this is going to be, yeah, the time that it takes for the landing piece to land at the front of the boat. Okay. Or it, that's how long it takes, sorry, that's how long it takes for the landing piece to arrive at this sea level, right? So if that's how long it takes, then um, we're gonna, so if that's how long it takes to travel in the y direction, that's how long it's in the air for the x direction. So that's how we're gonna figure out DL. And then that's also how long the ship will travel as well. But I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I think that's the wording's a little bit confusing. So um, let's gloss over that for a second. I'll get back to it in a minute um, when we're, to, we're at the ship portion. Okay, so our timing is 3.2077. That's how long the landing piece is in the air. So we can write that down over here. Okay. Then this DL right over here, this DL is just going to be the simple um, speed equation. So distance is equal to speed times time. And we get 15 cos 60 times 3.2077. And when I do that, I get D is equal to 24.05775 meters, right? So 
just this landing piece by itself. It's in the air for 3.2077 seconds, and it travels for a horizontal distance of 24.05775 meters. Okay, so that's DL. I should make that very clear. Now let's do D boat and let's do it in green because um, that's not really on. I haven't used green yet, so that'll make the problem a little bit more clear. I don't want to erase anything unless I really have to because this problem is a little bit tricky and I want you to have all the information. So, okay, so now we have our time, right? So this is also 3.2077 seconds and we have our speed. So again, we're just going to use our speed equation. So D boat is equal to speed of V boat multiplied by the time it takes. Right? So this is going to be 0 0.45 times 3.2077. And this is minus, right? And that's going to be equal to 1 minus 1.4435 meters. Okay, so this in 3.2077 seconds, this boat will be traveling minus 1.4435 meters, right? So we said that, I'm just gonna actually erase some of the drawings right over here so maybe I can explain the problem right over here. So we said that this piece is going to be right, maybe falling just like that, right? And then during this time, this boat is going to travel this much distance. So what we have to do is we have to add the absolute value of this distance, which we calculated right over here. So this was DL. And then we have to add the absolute value of this distance right, which is 1.4435. And that all together will be the distance that the boat has to start at. And that's what that, that's what actually makes the wording in this question so confusing because we're not really looking at, um, we're not just looking at, okay, at the final time, where is the boat? Uh, sorry, at the final time, our piece is landing that's not really the objective the the like the question like the focus of the question is really how far is this um how far is this boat at the beginning how far does it need to be at the beginning so that it can land on the at the front of the boat um this problem is definitely a little bit confusing but once you understand that then all we have to do is add 1.4435 meters to 24.05775 meters and all together our D is equal to DL plus D boat. And I'm just gonna add our absolute value signs. And that is equal to 25.5 meters. So that's our solution, capital D is equal to 25.5 meters. And that's the solution to our problem. I hope this was helpful. And if it was, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching.